In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Uh, Drew and I were, were talking earlier today about how both of us grew up really loving uh, the story of Daniel and uh, the, the, in the lion's den and the three holy children in the furnace, uh, whose memory we are celebrating today. And Drew, in fact, even brought up a very poignant episode of Veggie Tales uh, that he remembered as a child growing up uh, that really made uh, this story alive for him and made it one that he really, really loved. And really, the book of Daniel in the Orthodox tradition actually plays a very important and special role. And that was one of the big reasons I wanted to celebrate liturgy this evening as we are continuing our uh, preparation for the Feast of the Nativity of Christ, simply because to know what happens with Daniel and the three holy children is uh, something that is very, very important for us as Orthodox Christians to know and to have the story in our minds uh, in order for us to be able to fully appreciate and understand a lot of the liturgical imagery that we use throughout the course of the year. Uh, the book of Daniel, as I mentioned, is treated differently in the Orthodox Church. If you have one of the Orthodox study Bibles and if you learned the books of the Bible anywhere else, you would look at the Orthodox Study Bible and think they are completely out of order in the Old Testament. And uh, Daniel in the Orthodox Study Bible and in the original Septuagint uh, ordering of the Scripture actually falls at the very end of the Old Testament. It's the last book of the Old Testament because it is apocalyptic in nature. Just like the book of Revelation closes out the New Testament because it is apocalyptic in nature, the same is true of the book of Daniel. It closes out the Old Testament in, in that way. And there are even some very important additions to the book of Daniel uh, that are not uh, um, included in, in the scriptures that are not based on the Septuagint version of the scripture. Uh, and one of them is a profound uh, piece of hymnography that we use and we sing each and every year on Holy Saturday, the song of the three holy youths. We sing, bless and exalt him throughout all the ages, as we sing, uh, the choir sings that refrain as the, the verses of, of that a beautiful section of the scripture is, is read. So it's one that we use each and every year on Holy Saturday and should be ingrained in our minds and in our hearts. Uh, but also every single orthro service in the last two odes, the, or the seventh and the eighth ode that we sing uh, the canon, uh, every single canon that is written, those, those two odes, ode seven and ode eight, are based on the story of the, the three holy children in the fiery furnace and that song of the, the, of the, the youths that, that we sing on Holy Saturday. And so we hear about them over and over again. And we actually heard about Daniel last Sunday and we'll hear about him again this coming Sunday. And so Daniel is used a whole bunch in the Three Holy Children. They are used a whole bunch in the liturgical life of the Orthodox Church. So it's important for us to know them. The Church says it's important for us to know them. Why? Because of their extreme faith. And thankfully, we have uh, icons uh, here in the nave. Daniel, of course, is there in the apse of the, the nave and the three holy youths, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, or um, Ananias, Azariah, and Misael are there in the, the, uh, on the back wall up there in the balcony. And their, their faith is really the big reason why we need to remember them. They lived, or the, the, the time that they, that they lived was the time of the Babylonian captivity. The Hebrew people had been taken over and uh, many of them had even been enslaved and taken back to Babylon uh, to work in the, in, uh, the palaces or, or there in, in Babylon. And that's what, what, what happened with Daniel and with uh, and, uh, Ananias, Azariah, and Misael. They were taken into Babylon uh, and Daniel actually found himself uh, greatly favored by the king. He worked in the palace of the king, and he was able to, on a couple of occasions, interpret dreams for the king in order to be able to have the king uh, to understand some prophetic vision that he was having in these dreams, and Daniel was able to provide the interpretation uh, of those dreams. But even in the midst of being highly favored, Daniel and these three holy youths did not stop worshiping the one God. 
the one God that they knew. They were supposed to lay aside their, their uh, faith in their God when the Babylonians took them over, but they refused to do so, and it got them into trouble on a number of occasions. Daniel was thrown into prison. Daniel twice, twice, in the middle and then again at the end of the book, was put into a lion's den. The second time that he was put into the lion's den at the end of the book, uh, he was there for something like six days in the lion's den. And he was able to survive, even though the scripture says that these particular lions were fed uh, a whole bunch of, of cattle every single day. But they left Daniel alone there in the lion's den. So they refused to turn away from God. And of course, perhaps the most important story that we need to remember, the one that the church continuously brings up to us, is that faithful story of those three holy youths, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Uh, and they're um, having to face the fiery furnace that King Nebuchadnezzar put for them. Because they, again, refused to turn away from their faith in the one true God. They were told, all of the people were told that when they heard the the, the lyre and uh, the trigon and, and uh, the harp and all these different instruments. And, and, the, and every time we read that in, on Holy Saturday, we say those instruments like five different times as we recount the story. Uh, so all of these instruments play and they're supposed to stop what they're doing and to, to worship the God of the Babylonians. But the three, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, do not. And so because of that, they are brought to King Nebuchadnezzar, and King Nebuchadnezzar uh, gives them one final chance before he says, you're going to go into this fiery furnace. And this fiery furnace is so hot that the flames are leaping up out of the furnace, and it's even harming the people who are supposed to be stoking the fire and keeping the fire going. This is a, a big flame, but they refuse to do it. And of course, we know how the story goes, that they're thrown in and they are, are, uh, they're saved and we'll get there. But to me, one of the most important things that they say and do is in the book of Daniel, chapter 3, verses 17 and 18. Perhaps the two most important verses for us as we think about our own need for faithfulness and our own need to really follow the example of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego because they're looking at the flames. They are looking at the fire that will undoubtedly kill them. And they are being given an opportunity to turn against God and all they have to do is burn a little incense and worship this God of the Babylonians. But Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego very faithfully say to King Nebuchadnezzar, we have no need to answer you in regard to this thing. The king had just asked them, what God will save you? And they tell him, for there is a God in the heavens whom we serve, and he is able to save us from the burning fiery furnace, and he will deliver us from your hands, O king. But if not... Let it be known to you, O king, that we will not serve your gods nor worship the golden image you set up. But if not, what faithful words these three young men were able to, to exclaim at their moment of death. They knew that they were worshiping the one God. They had no doubt in their minds that what they were doing was absolutely 100% right and true. And yet, they said, and they said, God could save us. But they said, but if he doesn't, we will still never worship your gods. Because if he doesn't, that doesn't mean he isn't the God, the one true God that we should be honoring and worshiping. If he doesn't, it means that this is for our salvation, is what they were saying. This is ultimately for our entry into the kingdom of heaven. And that's what we really need to have as the faith that we have in this world. To be able to look at God and say, I know you can do it. And this is, this is the thing that I want to, be, to have it be over for me. We can look at this pandemic and say, get this thing out of here. We know that you can. But then look at him and say, but if not, we will still not turn away from you. 
We will put our hope and our faith and our trust exactly where it belongs, and that is in you. And we will endure the fiery torment that we are going to have to endure. And then, of course, after saying those words, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were thrown into the fiery furnace. And then they walked around in that fiery furnace. And then a fourth person shows up there, one like unto the Son of Man, an angel of the Lord is what the scripture says. And the fathers talk about this as being a, a theophany of Christ and really pay, shows a great example for what happens to us when we agree to faithfully walk in the flames. We don't walk alone. We walk with Christ. And it is Christ who ensures that even though there is fire going all around us, it ultimately does not serve for our destruction, but serves for us and for our salvation. And then as we find out even, even the salvation of others. Because King Nebuchadnezzar, seeing this moment, actually has a conversion experience. And he kind of goes back and forth before, uh, throughout his life, but at the end of his life, he does declare that the God of Daniel, the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego is the one true God. So that faithfulness was contagious even in, in that moment for them. So brothers and sisters, having the example of Daniel and the three holy children in, in the forefront of our minds is powerful. Their faithfulness is astounding to be able to know the power of God and to be able to say he can do anything. But even if he doesn't do the thing that I want him to do for me, I will not worship another God. I will not turn my heart and my life against him. And when I have to walk in the midst of the flames, I know that I am not walking alone because Christ is my companion and Christ is walking with me. And that is the best example that we can have in our life. So as we are finishing up our preparation for the Feast of the Nativity and the coming of our Lord, May the great witness of faith and example of Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego be what is in the forefront of our minds is exactly what Christ is doing. He is saving us, and we know that he is. And if he doesn't do it in the way that we expect, he's still doing it. And as we walk in the midst of the flames, he is there present with us. And may we have the faith of Daniel and the faith of those three holy children as we walk in the midst of the flames each and every day. And may we never turn our hearts away from the one thing needful, the kingdom of heaven, and unity with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Glory to the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen.